This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast. It contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there is no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Coda. Coda. Coda, Which, not to be way, rele- not to be confused with Hathi Lee. <laughs> oh no. Off to a terrible start. By the way, I did not know that Coda stood for uh child of deaf adults. Learned that today. Stupid boy I am. I was just like, it's got a music name. <laughs> Best movie. Then the movie starts with a Bruins fan. And I was like, uh oh, we're in trouble here. <laughs> then Fergia from Sing Street pops up, and I was like, I never had a chance with this movie. <laughs> All the awards, baby. <laughs> I actually texted you last night. Literally opening scene, the uh, the girl, the main character in this movie, wearing a Bruins sweatshirt, very clearly takes place in Massachusetts. I think mm-hmm. the the boat has Gloucester. Yep, Gloucester. It, uh, like 30 seconds in the movie, op- open up my phone. I'm like, yo, this movie is an only in Boston movie. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, yeah, big time. And I was like, Bruins in the first scene, give it best picture already. Bruins, Berkeley, almost dug up my, when I was watching, uh, what's it called, uh, Sound of Metal last year, um, within like five minutes, I made the Leo pointing <laughs> meme, yes. but uh, he's wearing like an only in Boston hat, and he has like Boston posters on the background, and he's like drinking a Sam Adams or something. It's just like way overdone, <laughs> like, I'm from Boston, and I recognize some of these things, Uh yeah, a Massachusetts movie for sure. A lot of Berkeley vibes. A beloved movie for sure. 96% on Rotten Tomatoes with a 93 audience score. Let's take a look at the betting odds. It is not a favorite by any stretch of the imagination. It is the one, two, three. It is the fourth worst betting odds. So I guess that would make it the, right in the middle. seventh. Seventh? Yeah. It's like sort of in the middle. Yeah, towards it's towards the back of the pack, and always no time. I haven't seen every movie. Within I hit pause to say, well, all right, how far am I into this movie? As I'm thinking this, twenty nine minutes into the movie, I felt I was watching the best picture. Really, not necessarily wow. the winner because I hadn't looked to see where it was ranked and what was expected of it. But I was like, this feels like. Best picture. This is it's a sure it's a coming of age movie, but there's so much more depth to it. And coming of age movies haven't won in recent years, but Lady Bird was people were all sorts of horny for Lady Bird. Yeah, uh, Brooklyn was excellent. There have been really good coming of age films. Obviously, Licorice Pizza this year. This is like the best of the ones. I've really? Seen. Yeah, I mean, I'm put. I'd put this ahead of Licorice Pizza. Wow. Yeah, that is really, really surprising to me. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was very sweet, very good, oh, uh, very enjoyable. Wasn't that a cute little movie? <laughs> very sweet, very good, very enjoyable. Uh, I think that it's probably like ambitious to say it's best picture. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it wins. I think that right now, if we're casting votes, I got no problem casting my vote. For it coda i think that it it uh it does a lot of things very well and it is a a movie that like you're not going to be like disappointed by many things about this movie it's it kind of like i'm disappointed in some of her classmates (laughs) well that's true uh they are horrible to this girl uh stonks down on uh white girls like those 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 kids in her class just the treatment of deaf people are just horrible what year is this movie supposed to take place in because it it is like it makes me feel good that it it almost feels unbelievable that a classmate would treat a person like that yeah i told you dude like if i like when i've been like shooting hoops or somewhere like in like a, a park or whatever i think i told the story on brunch we were playing uh, we were shooting hoops, and we were on the half court, and there were some, like, I don't know, maybe, like, 10, 11, 12-year-olds on the other half of the court, and they were so respectful of each other. Yeah. And I was I like, think that, yes, Gillette, Ed, I let's think, go. I think adults are getting worse, and children are getting better. Totally believe that. Yes. Totally believe that. Um, But, yeah, I, I thought it, this movie does a lot of things well, but I wouldn't say that it does anything, like, unbelievably well 
That's fair. It it just it's a very very sweet movie, and the the way the music is incorporated is really cool. The big scene where they sing "You're All I Need to Get By," and you're waiting the whole movie. Her and Fergia are practicing it, and he's great in this. He's always great. He's just a I keep using the word sweet, but he's just like a very sweet young man. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're practicing it to sing at this big recital, and her parents, of course, are are deaf. And when they perform the song, finally, as soon as they start singing, it switches to the vantage point of the parents. So you don't hear anything. They're just kind of looking around and looking for reactions and seeing if people are smiling, seeing if people like it. They're basically bored the entire time. Mm-hmm. I thought that was awesome. That was I should have seen that coming. Very necessary. Yeah. Once it happened, I was like, this uh, this does a really it, – it's a really like – serviceable thing because you're like oh yeah this is like this has got to be so weird for yeah them. You, you like you think it in your head the entire movie like it's a deaf family with a, a daughter that loves singing and music and that's got to be a strange thing but like once you actually see it put into place and you're kind of like transported into yeah that experience you're like oh yeah this is fucking bizarre the character of ruby is just a legend she has so many like there's the great sit down scene in the sound of metal and i'm not just going to i'm not just comparing the two because they both have deaf actors in it but there's the scene in sound of metal where the guy sits actually his name's ruben so there's a ruben there's ruby so maybe there are some comparisons with these two movies but mm-hmm. the guy who runs the house sits ruben down and he's like you have to leave and there's like that great sit down that's so tough and it's a really tough conversation Ruby has like 18 of those scenes in this movie. She has it with her dad. She has it with her mom. She has it with both of her parents. She the has it teacher. with the music teacher. Who the music is teacher fantastic. He, he is, is so good in this movie. Excellent. And is he nominated? He's not. Wow. The father is. And I understand. I would have understood either of those. But I'm like, man, I could have gone with both. Then neither would have a shot. But right. man, I don't know. The, the favorite did that, didn't they? Yeah, they did. The favorite yeah. nominated like every person in the movie. Yeah, and like Olivia, Olivia Coleman still and, won. And uh, I forget the other woman. Emma Stone. Name. No, but there was the other woman too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Emma Stone was nominated for Best Actress, and then Olivia Coleman and the other woman oh, were n- gotcha. nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Yeah. Um. But the actor who plays and Olivia Coleman won, so right. that didn't. Yeah, exactly. Didn't disqualify her. Uh, the guy who plays Mr. V is fantastic. Apropos nothing, I looked up. I looked this guy up, and he's like a established uh, actor. Do you know how old he is? Now that you're asking, it makes me think that this is like a trick question. Uh, he's like, I don't know. I would have guessed like 42. He is 60 years old. Holy, good for that guy. So he got into some of that, whether you want to say the Jennifer Aniston stuff, the J-Lo stuff. That that man's taking care of himself. I don't, like yeah. drop the skincare routine, King, because he looks great and his character. Great head of hair. He, great head of hair. His character is excellent. Both the parents are awesome. This is a movie that asks the question: uh, Isn't Marley Matlin so hot? And by that I mean all of the dad's lines are: Isn't my wife so hot? And I'm like, the first time he did it, I was like. Well, it's Marley Madeline, of course. She's gorgeous. And then, like, the next scene, they're, like, at dinner. It's like, could you pass the carrots? Can you believe I get this thing whenever <laughs> I want? And I'm like, oh, easy, sir. They are, the parents are horny. He they establish horned up on his wife. He's, he's, like, a wife guy. But he's also just like a hound. He, yeah, right. He's he's like a he's he's a wife guy. But usually when you think of a wife guy, you think of, like, a, a guy who's just like, oh, man, I Am I Aaron is so lucky to be married to this gal. He's like, and I so He's not lucky to be fucking way. this gal. Yeah. This gal. <laughs> yeah. They established right off the bat, there are two things that they established. It's one, the parents love to fuck. Mm-hmm. And two, uh the the parents are not aware at how much noise that they make in the house at all times. And it takes until like maybe an hour, hour twenty minutes into the movie for those like two things to to meet. Boy, do they. Boy, do they. But I was like, I paused the movie and I like took a bathroom break or whatever. And as I was paused and just thinking about the movie, I was like, 
it's gonna it's ridiculous if they don't ever address like the parents fucking in the house and not realizing how much noise they're making. And then like not fifteen minutes later, that's exactly what happened. Oh yeah, and it leads to again like this movie's this movie gets deep when it wants to. Uh so well, I forget the character's name, but Fergia Walsh Pilo from Sing Street is at Ruby's house and they're practicing their song and they hear the parents having sex. So the parents sit both of them down and he does his like, I need to know what your intentions are with him and signing and he's signing. And then he's like acting out, like putting on a condom Oh man. The condom gesturing is unbelievable. He's using his entire arm, He's using his whole arm and like, you get it immediately, but he's not sure if the young man gets it. So he's just getting more and more graphic. Ultimately, there's sound effects. There's yeah. A, there's a there's a release. Yeah, I don't think I think this may be the first condom demonstration in which there is coming involved. <laughs> yeah, it's like all right. So here's what you do: you open it. All right, you put it on. And you roll this down. And then you come, and all done. You put on a condom. <laughs> so, but. Uh, What's so great about Ruby's character is she's embarrassed by her parents the way that most teenagers are, but as the only um, hearing person in her family, she is so protective and defensive of her family. So she'll be embarrassed when they roll up blasting hip hop because they like how the vibration makes their butts feel Mm -hmm. like she'll be embarrassed by that, but the second she thinks anybody's looking at them differently, she will kick some ass. Yeah. Uh, so she goes to school the next day and this horrible bully. Again, I'm not going to get on this. There's... I'm not going to like ruin this kid's life for being so terrible because they're kids. But I'm like, yo, young lady, I hope you know you got a long way to go. There's no you character suck. development there either. That that person just is just terrible mean the from whole the beginning time. to end. Terrible. Uh, but... She's like, hey, Ruby, and she starts doing the gesture, and she does, like, a lot of deaf voice sounds and really not good stuff. So Ruby, of course, is pissed at Ferja, and he comes over to her in the hall and is like – it should be noted Ruby, Ruby doesn't have a lot of friends because she thinks that people will judge her and her family and everything. And uh, he runs over to her in the hallway and – He's like, look, I'm sorry, I only told one person. And she's like, you're making fun of them, blah, blah. And he says, he was like, honestly, it wasn't funny because they were deaf. It was funny because that was a ridiculous like, situation. Right, yeah, the, the situation was funny. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, all right, this movie can get kind of deep. Because like you see that and you're like, yo, he's a jerk for going around making fun of the and parents. He didn't, and he didn't tell everybody. He and told like, one he was person. making fun of the parents, but like, he was making fun of like, oh my God. Right. Her dad is nuts. <laughs> yeah. Not like her dad is some nuts deaf guy. So I I really loved the movie. Uh I wondered why she didn't sign more when she was singing. Like there's a c- scene with her dad where he says, sing for me, and he's putting his hands on her vocal cords. And she's like very, crying, very and it's like nice a powerful, scene. nice scene. But I was like, "Yo, give him some, hook him up with some words, sign." But then later at her Berkeley audition, when they break in to watch it, uh, side note, I thought they were when they said, "Hey, let's go upstairs." The I parents, I was like, "Oh, you're gonna fuck." Yeah, I know that's audition. exactly what I thought. And then they you brought the g- son, and I was like, "Oh, I don't like where this is going." Yeah, I was like, <laughs> "Some interventions needed." Like, you love each other very much, but like, I don't know if you have this healthiest relationship with love, parents. Uh, <laughs> so that, but they are like, "Let's go upstairs," and they just watch the audition, and she sees that they're there. It and would, she signs to them as she's singing. It would honestly, though, make sense that they would fuck all the time because, like, they are very isolated from the rest of their community. They like establish that they kind of like live by themselves, mm-hmm. and like they don't have outside connection with any of these other people. So it's like just the family and just the relationship. So it would make sense that their, like, sexual relationship was very strong. Yeah. Uh, some great lines in this movie, by the way. The, the, I mean, the one, the scene that you just mentioned of, of him in the hallway, him being like, 
I'm going to text you every two minutes until you uh, oh, yeah. until you decide that you want to talk to me. And she's like, that is some psychopath shit. And yeah. he's like, you're right. I'm not going to do that. That's a very bad idea. I'm sorry. I will not do that. Well done, young man. We stand a king. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, yeah. And, and we, we stand Ruby for being direct there. Yeah. If Ruby was like, huh, please don't, that dumbass would go home and be like, what does please don't mean? I'm going to text her. Be like, hey, no. He's like, you know what? No seemed smart there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do that. But they hit it off. They do kissies with each other. They jump in the water. They uh, do some... Do kissies. They they do. They do. They really kiss each other. Um, some of the great lines I wrote down. The choir teacher uh, has them come together and rehearse. And there's a quote. I don't know if this person made it up, but I first heard it from the guitarist uh, Corey Wong. He said, practice is what you do at home. Rehearsal is what you do at rehearsal. Or rehearse is what you do at rehearsal. So, like, you got to have your shit ready to go, and then you get together, and that's when you work on how it all works together. So, uh, he's having them do this duet. They show up to work on it, and he finds out, they haven't really been working on it much, especially not with each other. And he says, duet. It's in the word. You must do it together. <laughs> Great line from Mr. V. Uh, after the uh, after the talk that they give the young man, <laughs> she says to her parents, I don't know why. This is line so funny to me. She says, you guys are the worst, exclamation <laughs> point. And, of course... The, in the big meeting with all the fishermen, uh, oh, the yeah. father stands up, and it's signed, but she vocalizes it for him. Uh, Suck my dick, <laughs> like <laughs> in the middle of this meeting because they're ripping off all the fishermen. And then she goes, that, "Those are his words." Yeah, not she's like mine. that was from him, <laughs> not me. Um, what do you think the uh, the the scene for like the uh, um, like the one they show yes. during the award show. Yeah. Um, I could see it being them sitting on the, the truck. truck. Yeah, yeah that so. that that could be a favorite, but I mean the mother daughter scene is great. Marley Matlin saying like admitting like I was so sad when I found out that you could hear. Like I thought that I wasn't gonna have any sort of connection with you. That's a very good one. Um classic teenager stuff that she was like don't she was like, I thought that I would be a bad mom, uh, because I couldn't hear. And then, she, like, classic teenager is like, no, you're a bad mom for so many reasons. It's not just that one. I think that it's uh, – those are very good. I could easily see it being the truck one or that's, like, 1A. And then 1B, I think, would be the school hallway scene. With uh, with, with, with the him. kid? Yeah. But, I actually, I don't know if that's going to be the case because it's a very family-oriented movie. I right. feel like it has to be a family scene. Right. If they don't have someone from the family and they – I mean, that scene – But it is her defending the family. Yeah. She – I mean, I, I, I love that character. As I said, um, Troy Kotzer got a nomination for Best Supporting Actor. I, I thought that she was – Great, uh, Amelia. What is her last name? Amelia Jones. Is she uh, Ruby? That's Ruby. Troy Cotter is Frank. incredible voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the Mister V really helps her. She starts off doing a lot of that like intentionally flat stuff that Josh Tillman might sing about in the song "The Night Josh Tillman Came to Our Apartment." But she's got a lot of talent and. It's honed well. Marley Matlin, legend. Daniel Durant as the brother who... I got some questions about the brother and her friend hooking up. There might be some... Licorice pizza things going on. Should <laughs> that be happening there? But all in all, I love this movie. I think that it's deserving of the high marks it gets on Rotten Tomatoes. I think that it's the best of the movies that... I've seen so far of those of the seven of the ten. I really liked it. I would not say that it's the best, but I would not be shocked or disappointed if it did win. It's just a very good time. It's a very sweet time. It's family drama. It's a kid growing up. It's music stuff. All of it is good. Plus, it's got that name with that double meaning.